Psalms 16, preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. I have no good apart from you. And as we say, I have nothing good that is apart from you. Everything inside me is not good, except what is from the Lord. That clearly ex explains the depravity of man and woman. We are so much totally dependent on God and His providence. Only Him can make us good. All right, so Psalm here, 16, David cried to God, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Only those who know to take refuge in God will be protected, will be healed, will be, will be uh, made well, will be good. Whatever the case may be, sickness or financial or relationship, but it may take a while, some may take years. Sometimes God will change our, His answers to what we ask for because He knows better. And no is also an answer from God. You know that, right? The worst is, is apathy. You should so many prayer requests up, like, like the Bible says, like a fragrance, like a incense being burned, rising up to the throne of God. The worst is all this incense goes up, he does the answer, yes or no, or what, you know. No is an answer, you know that? But sometimes, a lot of times when God, well, all the times, if God says no, He will give us a better one. Sometimes we may not like it that much, but we have nothing good. Did you hear that? I have no good apart from you. Wow. Let's read the NSP even better. It says, I have nothing good besides you. Nothing. There's nothing good in me. It's quite incredible. All right. Verse 3, as for the saints who are on the earth, they are the majestic ones. All my delight is in them. This is how, how powerful this is. Um, that David delight in, in the saints. Those people who follow God are his best friends. <laughs> he delight in them. He make friends with them. He are the best buddies with them. You know, all those saints. You know what saints are? I don't mean the Catholic version of saints. Saints are really people believe in Christ, follow Christ, serving Christ, following God. You know, as, as a, we are all saints in Christ Jesus. We're sanctified. Now, he said, the Lord, verse 5, the Lord is, my, is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You support my lot. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance. Oh, what a beautiful way of putting it. What is inheritance? Your inheritance don't look it from your parents. Parents do give you some. As long as you don't quarrel. <laughs> but the best, the ultimate, the real substance inheritance from the Lord for this life and the next life because that's what really matters and what counts because inheritance for the next life is eternal life it's, it's uh, immortality who wants a billion dollars bank account and die in uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 or even 100 compared to a guy with $10 in the pocket but live in immortality. Go choose what? If you have any brain at all, you choose the latter. It's no brainer. All right? Therefore, David said, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance. It's the portion. Everyone has a portion. You have a portion from your parents, from a lot of things, your schools, whatever. But the best portion, the portion, is the inheritance from the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. My cup overflows with blessings. You want the cup to be filled from the Lord, from what the Lord gives. And you support my lot. Oh, verse six, the measuring lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. The measuring line. So what is this measuring line? Let's, let's go and check it out. 
What is David talking about? The measuring lines. Give me a second. Let me see. All right. So, uh, okay, verse five and verse six, all right? All right, the portion can be portions what the Lord has given to us. Uh, verse six, boundary lines. The lines have fallen for me pleasant places. Uh, demarcated tribal and national borders. God has basically given us good bar. For me, a lot of times, God has put me in a nice area neighborhood. Okay, so I live in a good neighborhood. Look at this. You not only cannot complain, you just have to give thanks and praise at all times. I don't exactly live here, but very close to this area. This is a very expensive area, just to qualify, right? But it just, just, just think about that. Now, I don't want you to give the uh, give you the impression that you know your blessings from God has been an area of well affluent, saving good neighborhood. We don't need to have in, to be in the you know the affluent expensive neighborhood per se but we do want to live in an area that's safe that is healthy to raise our kids etc i think god understands that god will give that's why jesus say uh look at the birds in the sky they never work but god your father feeds them not a single one would drop with their father's approval permission this is the metaphoric language but in reality probably that's the case and you have God giving uh, the lilies, etc. God say, He will look. That's why Jesus says, Seek ye after His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things shall be given to you. Man, this is such a profound verse. It's easy to quote, it's hard to do. Take your eyes off from the wealth and the pleasures of the world and the fame of this world. Make a name for yourself. But seek ye, seek ye, seek ye after his kingdom, his righteousness. Seek after the kingdom and his righteousness. What is right? The kingdom means Jesus rules and reigns. Seek after that. You won't go wrong. Seek him, seek his first. Seek ye first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we don't need to worry about our neighborhood and all this. You see how important it is so that we understand where we stand, where we want to go. All right. I've, so David say, your lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also, my heart instructs me. You see, I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. When, do, when was the last time the Lord gave you counsel, may I ask? A lot of time, this counsel comes from reading the Bible. But more specifically, sometimes, because the Bible gives you principles. But sometimes, the Lord can give you directions. Like the Macedonian call for Paul. Like Peter saw a vision. Major, major direction. God doesn't give us visions for small things, but big things. Something really burdening your heart. Okay. I myself have felt receiving visions from the Lord. Okay. In the night also, my heart instructs me. Did you see that? Verse 7. My heart instructs me. How can your heart instruct you if you don't fill your heart with the Word of God, with the Scripture? With his wisdom and understanding, read the book of Proverbs. I cry out to the Lord, shout unto the Lord. The wisdom cry out for you in the public square. Because there's so many noises coming to jamming, to jam you. But you have one voice you need to pay attention to. That's a, the voice of the wisdom in the book of Proverbs. It's the Lord's calling out to you. Pay attention. How do you do that? Make sure you do your Bible. Uh, meditation, devotion, every morning, like I'm doing now and I'm sharing this with you. It is so important you do that. If you don't do that, you miss it. It's not like you did it two days ago. No, I don't need to do it. No, you do it every day. Because the Bible says in the book of Psalms, blessed are those who meditate upon the Word of God day 
and night in fact no just day not only every day twice at least in the morning and the night time day and night day and night okay so it's really really important we do that if we don't do that no man can can be an island no man can stand strong it's so easy for us to fall because this world is hostile towards us you see all these things sad things happening grieving things in the world today so much brokenness so much scary things killings war savages my goodness we have to set our hearts now verse 8 i've set the lord always before me because he's at my right hand i shall not be shaken wow no matter what happens you'll never be shaken because i have set my lord always before me verse 8 always before me David looks towards the eternal pleasures, God's right hand. Okay, so this is really important. That, and because of that, therefore, okay, verse 8, I've set the Lord always before me. Always before me. What does it mean? You always draw close to the Lord. You always spend time meditating on God's word. Pray, always. It's a delight. It's like breakfast. If you don't eat breakfast, you feel weak after a while, correct? If you don't do devotion night in the morning, you feel, you feel heavy spiritually, in the mood. That should be the way. You, should, you feel something lacking. You haven't taken your coffee like in the morning, you know? You haven't taken your spiritual vitamins, spiritual devotional time with the Lord. Verse 9, Therefore my heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. Oh, this is the beautiful part. Therefore, my heart is glad. Therefore, my whole being rejoices. I'm not only rejoicing, part of my entire being, my whole being rejoices. That's the extent, the pervasive nature of the rejoicing in God. Once you get Him, once you, once you put the Lord before me, always, once you acknowledge He is, without Him, you are nothing. You walk with Him day and night. That's what you're going to experience. Hallelujah. That is what is called, my heart is glad. How can your heart be glad? Because He delivers from your problem. You see that? He gives you a, a beautiful portion of inheritance. The lines have fallen for you in pleasant places. All these are experiential. You know? Because the Lord protects you. Therefore, my heart, my heart rejoices. Now, all this was said. That is how you enjoy God. Westminster's the first call of God is to, 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 to know God, to enjoy God, and to glorify God. I believe that you can be the mountain intellectual theologian even, but if you don't enjoy the blessings of God, you are nobody because you have not known God. Psalm 16, David truly is a man who knows God, experienced God's goodness, good portion of inheritance, pleasant inheritance. Lines are fallen and pleasant, uh, you know, pleasant places and beautiful inheritance and all these things. Therefore, he can say, my heart rejoice with my whole being. My heart rejoices with my whole being every day, whole heart rejoicing and praising our God. That's the way. I just want to make sure that we understand that we don't become a superficial spiritual. We call superficial spirituality. Knowing the form, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. There is power. You need to experience the power. And then you can rejoice. You can know God and can rejoice with your whole being. My heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. May the Lord show us more and more. Amen.